Jesus, you brought me all the way. And you carried my burdens every day. You are such a wonderful savior. I've never known you to fail. Jesus, you brought me all the way. Jesus, you brought me all the way. And you carried my burdens every day. You are such a wonderful savior. I've never known you to fail. Jesus, you brought me all the way. Jesus, you brought me all the way. And you carried my burdens every day. You are such a wonderful savior. I've never known you to fail. Jesus, you brought me all the way. Jesus, you brought me all the way. And you carried my burdens every day. You are such a wonderful savior. I've never known you to fail. Jesus, you brought me all the way. Jesus, you brought me all the way. And you carried my burdens every day. You are such a wonderful savior. I've never known you to fail. Jesus, you brought me all the way. Well, God bless you, Sister Dorset. God bless you, Brother Moore. Praise the Lord. Good morning, Bailey. God bless you, my friend. Good morning, Elder and Sister Bailey. God bless you both. Good morning, Sister Purvis. Good morning, Sister Perkins. Good morning, Mother Street. God bless you. Good morning, Lady Winston. God bless you and Pastor Winston. Good morning, Sister Rodriguez. Good morning, Sister Carter. Good morning, Carmelita. Good morning, Sister Donaldson. God bless you. Good morning, Deacon Grant. God bless you and your family, sir. Good morning, Sister Dykes. God bless you and your family. Good morning, Tiana. Good morning, Sister Stacy. Good morning, Sister Dawes. God bless you and Minister Dawes. Good morning, Missionary Johnson. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Ronza. Good morning, Deacon and Sister Morris. God bless you. Good morning, Katrina. God bless you and your family. Good morning, Elder Mott. God bless you and Sister Mott. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Sister Burnett. Good morning, Deacon Triplett. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Cheek. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Marilyn. God bless you. Good morning, Bishop and Mother Joseph. God bless you both. Good morning. Good morning, Brother Comfort. God bless you, sir. Good morning, Sister Sarah. Good morning, Sister Linda. God bless you, Tiana. Good morning, Sister Rob Blunt Robinson. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Murphy Jackson. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Barnwell. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Speller. Praise the Lord, Sister Riley. Good morning, Mother Hudson. Good morning, Deacon and Mother Wilson. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Bailey. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Dawn. Good morning. Good morning, Deacon Davis. God bless you and Mother Barbara. Good morning, Sister Minor. Good morning. God bless you, Sister Angela Davis. Good morning, Sister Simpson Haynes. God bless you, Sister Pedlar. Good morning, Sister Ingram. God bless you. Good morning, Brother Kenneth. God bless you. Good morning, Tilda. God bless you, my cousin. Good morning, Bishop. Desnate Alday and Lady Alday, God bless you both. Good morning. Good morning, Deacon Arthur. Good morning, Sister Wiggins. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Lewis. Good morning, Sister Andrini. God bless you and Brother Kenneth. Good morning, Sister Oaks. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Speller. Good morning, Sister Woody Stern. God bless you. Well, good morning and praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And as always, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be able to spend a few moments with you with a biblical meditation and in prayer. For more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know. And we continue to witness and see the manifestation of God through the function of prayer, God answering prayer, God delivering, God setting free. I was reading a praise report on yesterday. Somebody 
who was blessed with a tremendous financial blessing. They had asked the Lord to do it. We have been praying with them for it. And they looked up in the account and there was a tremendous amount of money. So God is providing and God is hearing and God is answering prayer. I want us to lift up right now, right now, hallelujah, Bishop Delroy Thomas, the Bishop of Jamaica. We're praying for his body. We're praying for the healing of his body in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, because we know that God is able. As always, <clears throat> if you have a prayer request, please um, share it with us. If you're on Facebook, you can place it into the chat or you can um, inbox Reginald Davis or inbox Refuge Temple Church. If you're on Instagram, you can place it in the chat on the screen or you can direct message Pastor RJD. And to everybody on the conference call, and thank God for our conference call listeners, everybody on YouTube and anybody can, can text your prayer request to 336 Five six seven five three five eight. Again, that number is three three six five six seven five three five eight, and we will add them to the prayer list. We are praying over them, and more importantly, we are believing God with you for what we know God is able to do. Yes, my friends, God is able, and He can do exceeding and abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. I want to return to Revelation and move on to Revelation chapter 10 this morning. Revelation chapter 10, and we're going to read this um, verses 1 through 11. Revelation chapter 10, verses 1 through 11. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head. And his face was as if it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot up on the earth. And he cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. And when seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, seal up those things which the seven trump thunders uttered and write them not. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven and swear by him that liveth forever and ever who created heaven and the things that therein are and the earth and the things that therein are and the sea and the things that which are therein that they should be, that there should be time no longer. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he have declared to his servants the prophets. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again, and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And when, and I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, take it and eat it up, but it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey, but as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. I want to talk to you from the thought, the little book, the little book. Um, we're seeing in vivid detail the unleashing of the judgment of God upon the earth, upon humanity, upon the people in the earth. Um, we see in the fifth and sixth trumpet, the opening of the underworld and the beginning of satanic activity on the earth. We see the um, fallen angel in chapter 9. We see um, the horsemen. We see the, the scorpion-like locusts. In the sixth seal, we see the horsemen of 200 million prepared to battle, and they are going to kill one-third of the earth's population. 
um, because it is so vivid, we 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 think that some of the symbolism um, is in some of the um, traits are symbolic of the fear and the um, level of um, anxiety that they're going to create and the torment that they're going to release on the earth. Remember that the torment is so powerful that is on the earth that men are going to want to die and not be able to die. They're going to beg for death and death is going to elude them. And even as death comes through the horsemen and brings all levels of destruction, that there are still some people on this planet that will not repent. And so John now sees a vision of a mighty angel. And there's some dispute in the um, translation or in the interpretation whether this is really an angel or is this Jesus Christ coming in the form of an angel. And, and the reason why some believe it to be Jesus is because he, is, he comes down from heaven. He's clothed with a cloud. He's clothed with a cloud. There is a rainbow on his head, um, which indicates um, the mercy applied. Um, his feet are like pillars of fire, very much like the varnished brass that is in the beginning of the book of Revelations. And so there is some level of mm, um, theories rather than that either he is an angel representing God or he is God, Jesus Christ himself. Remember that God prepared or revealed himself in, in Exodus as in a cloud. Remember that there is a cloud around the mercy seat. Remember that he went before Israel as the cloud by day. Remember that when his spirit filled the tabernacle, there was a cloud. Remember that he appeared to Israel as a cloud to reprove them. Remember in the transfiguration, Jesus was overshadowed by a bright bright cloud. Remember that the cloud received Jesus in his ascension and in his second coming, he is coming on a cloud. So it's very much could very possibly be Jesus who John is seeing in this vision. He had the rainbow uh, around his head, which was a symbol of mercy. Going back to Genesis is also the glow of deity. Remember there's a cloud or there's a rainbow of colors around the throne of God. Remember that in the transfiguration, his face shined like a sun. Remember, he is called the son of righteousness with the healing in his wings. Remember, Paul on the road to Damascus saw him as a bright light. Remember, his feet, as I said earlier, were like pillars of fire, like fine brass. Remember, when he cries, he sounds like a lion. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah, the Bible says, and to loose, and he is the one that is able to loose the seven seals. They that walk before him, walk after the Lord, rather he he shall roar like a lion and shall roar when the children shall tremble from the west. That's from Hosea chapter 11. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion, utter his voice from Jerusalem and the heavens and the earth shall shake. Joel chapter 3 verse 6. He's called the angel of the Lord. So it's entirely possible that this is Jesus represented as an angel. If it's not Jesus himself, it's an angel representing Jesus to show the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ and literally him taking over complete control in the earth. Now, we know about the bottomless pit and we know about the locusts and we know about the horsemen but it's interesting that right after the revelation of those disasters here comes this angel and i want you to look at the angel here comes this angel and 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 notice john is writing and he's about to write the things that the seven thunders say but i want you to look at verse four i was about to write and i heard a voice from heaven saying unto me seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered so we don't have written what the seven thunders uttered. We don't have it. John was told not to write it. John was told not to share it. So we have the revelation that was given given to us that God authorized. But everything John saw, he did not write. 
Everything John saw, he did not write because if God told him not to write, to seal the book, not to share it, he did not share it. All right. But what we do have is this angel. Look at verse five. The angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth. So he's standing on the sea and he's standing on the earth, which is a revelation of God's total dominion upon the earth. Yes, the locusts have been unleashed. Yes, the horsemen have been unleashed. But the earth still belongs to God. Remember that Satan is called the God of this world in the Greek cosmos, the worldly system, the worldly mindset, the carnal attitude. That's what Satan controls. But the earth belongs to God. That's why he uses the earth as an instrument of judgment against humanity because the earth belongs to God. And when this angel puts his foot on the sea and at the on the earth at the same time, it is a revelation of the complete fact that the earth belongs to God. The earth belongs to God. It belongs to God. It's, it's his. It doesn't belong to man. It doesn't belong to Satan. It doesn't belong to the demonic kingdom. But the earth belongs to God. All of it belongs to God. He stands with his foot on the on the sea and his left foot on the land, indicate, indicating complete control of the earth. But unto the Son of Man, he says, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. He is in complete control. The earth is the Lord's. I said it a moment ago. The fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Now, the scroll is open. Because the seals have been broken by Jesus Christ. He is the only one worthy to open the book. As the angel cries with a loud voice as a lion. And John hears the seven thunders. He is ready to write, but he's told not to write these things. He is to seal it up. This is in contrast to what he was told in the beginning of the book where he's supposed to write and share what he sees. But for whatever reason, this is held as a mystery that belongs only to God only to God. So now notice here verses five and the angel, which, which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth, lifted up his hand to heaven and swear by him that liveth forever and ever who created heaven and the things that are, that therein are and the earth and the things that therein are and the sea and the things that therein are, that they shouldn't be in time no longer, that there should be time no longer. This is God. This is Jesus Christ reclaiming his authority. He was already the God of heaven, but he's now reclaiming his authority in the earth. He's reclaiming his authority in the sea. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he have declared it to his servants and the prophet. In other words, he is bringing time to a close. He is bringing seasons to a close. It is the end of time as we understand it and know it. And God is taking control of his universe. God is exerting himself as God. God is showing himself as the savior. God is showing himself as the creator, as the sovereign God upon the entire universe. Satan does doesn't have dominion. Demons don't have dominion, but all of the dominion and the power belongs to God. And this is a revelation of that power. Now, if you go further in verse number eight, the Bible says, and the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, go and take the little book, which is open in the hand of the angel, which stand up upon the sea and the earth. So John goes to take the book. And I went up to the angel and said unto him, give me the little book. And he said unto me, take it and eat it up. But it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. So notice this dichotomy of the word of God being bitter but also being sweet, being bitter, but also being sweet. It is sweet because to the child of God, the word of God is sweet. The Bible says it's sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. So it's sweet, but to the sinner, to those that, is, that are lost, this is bitter because it's sharing the judgment of God. It's sharing the, the God judging upon the earth. And it's not going to be sweet. People are going to die. People are going to be lost. People are going to be su are going to suffer because of the word that comes out of the mouth of God. It's very clear that it's not the same for everybody. Now, some of us look at God and we see his mercy. We see his grace. When we read the word of God, we read 
speak the promises of God. We read what God is able to do. We read of the authority and the sovereignty and the greatness of God. But when others read the word, they read the judgment of God because they have refused to hear. They have refused to take heed. They have refused to acknowledge God. They want to go by their own path, their own way. They reject the word. They reject obedience. They reject humility. And to them, the word is bitter. If and, and, and as you read this Bible, the Bible will either give you hope or it'll plant fear in you. The Bible will either give you hope or it will plant fear. If you're a believer, if you love the Lord, if you are living for God, then when you read the word and ingest the word, Word, there's life, there's hope, there's peace, there's joy to, in every situation. Every situation, it, 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 it exists. But if you read the word and you refuse to acknowledge it and you refuse to obey it and you refuse to accept it, then this word of God is going to be bitter. It is going to be bitter because it is filled with the judgment of God. And the only way that you can avoid the judgment of God, my brothers, my sisters, we've got to repent. The only way we can avoid God's judgment, we can avoid his wrath, we can avoid the calamities that are coming upon this earth, somebody has to repent. Turning their life to the Lord, giving up their sin, confessing their sin, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, believing in the gospel of Jesus Christ, obeying the word, oh my God, obeying the word to be born of the water and of the spirit, that's the only way, that's the only way that the word does not become bitter. But if you don't, if you if you refuse to acknowledge what God is saying, you are accepting the judgment of God that is going to come upon this earth. And so it's important, saints, it's important, saints, that we ingest the word of God. It's important, saints, that we ingest the whole word of God, the word of God that lives, the word of God that abides, the word of God that stands forever, and that we not only ingest it, but that we believe it, we believe it, we believe Believe it to the saving of our souls, to the delivering of our bodies, to God moving in such a way that our lives and our beings are changed. Yes, my friends, the book is sweet and bitter for those that will believe. And, and so that's why John is commanded, John is commanded to do what? To prophesy. That thou must prophesy again before many peoples, nations, tongues and kings. We are commanded to share this word with humanity. We are commanded. I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping and praying that this study of revelation is an awakening in all of us, not just a personal faith, but a faith that pushes so that others can receive and be saved. A faith that pushes us to teach, to preach, to evangelize, to witness so that others who don't know the Lord can be saved. I'm hoping, I'm praying that this faith will allow us to do that, that our faith and the word of God will motivate us because it's not enough just for you and I to be saved, but we want everybody that the Lord will call to come to know him as Savior and Lord. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you for this day. We honor your name for your goodness, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. Lord, you have been so very good to us. You have been so gracious to us. You have been so merciful to us that all we can say is thank you. Thank you, God, for being waking us up this morning. Thank you, God, for clothing us in our right mind. Thank you that we were able to get up and get prepared and to join this great body of believers, my God, from all over the world. Lord, I thank you right now. I thank you for my brothers and my sisters. I thank you for their faith and their faithfulness. And I'm asking you to release unexpected favor upon everybody that's in this prayer room today, whether we're on the conference call or Facebook or Instagram or YouTube, however we have come, God, release your presence and release your power to the deliverance of souls and minds, to the healing of bodies 
In the precious name of Jesus Christ, God, we're praying today for Shanae Hale and her family. We're praying for Miracle Smith, God. Remember that precious, oh God, teenager. We're praying for Mother Riddick. We're praying for Mother Dillard. We're praying for Craig Dorn, for Nadina Dorn. We're praying for Bria Blackwell. We're praying for Quayshawn Dorn, for Quayvon Blackwell. We're praying for Diamond. We're praying for Derek Dorn today. We're praying for Madison. We're lifting up Deacon Triplett today. God, make a way. God, I'm praying for Brad Jr. That you would step in and undertake God and strengthen his heart. I'm praying for Catherine Green Jefferson. I'm praying for Donetta and Serena today. We're praying for Evangelist Stephanie Martin. We're praying for John Roy. We're praying for the Glory Chapel Baptist Church. We're praying for the unsaved today. Lord, let the sound go out. To everybody that does not know you, let the sound go out, God, to everybody that is outside of the ark of safety. Lord, save, God, deliver, God, make whole in the name of Jesus. Let them come away from their sin and turn to you, God, in repentance, and let them be born of the water and of the spirit. I'm praying for backsliders today that you would recall and reclaim and restore and revive. I'm praying, my God, for the discouraged that you would help them to hold on. My God, and continue in the race. God, we're praying, God, for the children everywhere in school, that you would cover and protect them. We're praying, my God, for Brandon and Raven Hammond, and we're praying for JC on God. We're praying for Juliet Johnson, that you would remember her and meet every need in her life. God, we're praying for every name on the text, every name sent by messenger, text, email, every mail sent by messenger. God, undertake, God, every unspoken request. Lord, step in deliver, save, set free in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I'm praying right now for the healing of the sick, Lord. So many, oh God, sick. So many recovering from surgery. So many recovering, my God, from illness. But we're believing that you would touch and deliver. We're praying for Brian Jones. We're praying for Gloria Smith. We're praying for Ina Chandler today. We're praying for Dr. Campo. We're praying for Aaron and Daniel. We're lifting up Evangelist Lavinia Flournoy. God, we're praying for Linda Bugs. We're praying for Pastor Atkins today. We're praying for Mother Gatling. We're praying for Sister Bass Knight. We're praying, my God, for Mr. James Page today. God, send your healing power. We're praying for miracle destiny. We're lifting up Deacon Theodore Shading. We're praying for Mother Shading. We're praying for Bishop Warner. We're praying for Mother Barbara Davis. We're praying, my God, that you would remember Apostle Faison. We're praying for Deacon Davis's brother today. We're praying for Deborah and Betty and Elaine and Marcian. And we're praying for Gladys. And we're praying for Vicky's daughter. We're praying, my God, for Sister Dawn, for Helen Scott, for Elaine. Leaf Powell, for Marlene Roseman, for Valerie Stewart, for Todd Jones today. We're praying for Sister Speller. We're praying for Deacon Harry Nash. Everybody everywhere that is sick, God, we're lifting them up right now because we know that you are a healer. God, stretch out your mighty hand of healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch out that healing hand to Deacon Adams, to Deacon and Mother, to Deacon Wilson today. Oh God, to Deacon Harrison, Lord, to Elder Tall. Stretch out your healing hand, God, to Bishop Alfonso Brooks, to Mother Shirley Clark, to Mother Evangeline Jenkins, to Lady Andrea Maxwell. God, remember my God. Mother Coleman, remember Sister Pope today. Remember Bishop Mac Vincent, Bishop Irving Taylor, Bishop Gregory Wilder, Bishop Alvin Palmer, Apostle Leroy Joseph, Apostle Charles Williams, Apostle, my God, remember Apostle Sylvester Norwood. Everybody that needs healing, God, touch them now. Remember Brother Wiggins, Brother and Mother Sherrod, Deacon and Mother Garland today, Dr. Hayward, Sister Hayward, Dr. Hayward's mother. Remember Mother Jill, Mother Pride. Remember Mother Chambers, Mother Carter, Mother Moorhead. Remember Lady Staten today. Lord, we lift up Pastor Carr and Minister Carr. We're praying for Elder Tyson, Elder Smith. We're praying today for Mother Foster, Henry J, Brother Cliff. Oh God, for Mother Tanaj, Mother Holman, Missionary Simmons today. God, we're praying, oh God, that you would touch and heal in the name of Jesus. Cynthia, Catherine, and Duchess. We're praying for Mother Jenkins this morning. God, that you would touch her body. We're praying today, Lord, for everybody that needs healing. God, move upon them now in the name of Jesus. 
Jesus, remember Marlette today. Remember Maurice. Remember Dennis. Remember Tony and Kimberly. God, everybody in a hospital, a nursing home, a rehab center, everybody in hospice, God. Lord, everybody even watching now that needs healing. Remember Missionary Domingo today. Remember Pastor and Lady Winston. Remember Deacon Grant. Remember Bishop D. And Lord, stretch out your healing hand and do what we know you're able to do. God, I'm praying for grieving people today. I'm lifting up David Tynes. I'm praying for the Henderson family. I'm praying for Arita Shank and family. God, I'm praying, my God, for Takesha Hill, her brother, and her family. I'm praying for the Rose family, for the Perry family. God, I'm lifting up everybody that's grieving this morning, that you would come by and comfort and strengthen them in the name of Jesus. I'm praying, oh God, for Lady Maxwell and family. I'm praying for Dr. Carter and family. I'm praying today that you remember Bishop Field, Shekinah, and their families. God, I'm praying today that you would look on, my God, oh God, Mother Grant and the family. Look on, my God, Mother Harrell and the family. Look on the Groover family, the Kramer family, the Hargrove family, the Blunt family, every family, God, that is dealing with loss today. I'm praying for your grace to be upon them in the name of Jesus. Remember the Bynums, the Taylors, the Lloyds, the Carters, the Giles family. Look on the Meadows family, the Moyer family. Look on the Perkins family today. I'm praying for the Dockery family. I'm praying for Sister Pam, my God, her mother and her sisters today. I'm praying for the White family. I'm praying for Anita and the Brian Hopkins family, for Margie and the McLean, Melvin and Street families. I'm praying for the Jackson family, the Green family, the Ned family. I'm praying for the Newkirk family today. Remember the Ransom family. Remember Brenda and the Alan McNeely family. Sean and Monique and the Gary Porter family. I'm praying today that you remember Trell and Ryan, my God, and the Alan Williams family. Remember Tommy and Michelle today. My God, and the Clark family, the Smith family. God, remember the Mays, the Dunlaps, the Purdy's, the Sneeds, the Washington Fields family. Remember the Winninghams, the Bankses, the Middletons. Remember, my God, the Taylors today. We lift up the Felix family, the Zapata family, the Mannix, the Boogums, the Gleans, the Arthurs. We pray today for the Briggs family. We pray for the Phillips family, the Taylors. We pray for the Josephs today. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we're praying for every family, God, that you would touch and deliver in the name of Jesus Christ. We're praying, my God, for your grace to be upon everyone that's grieving. God, we're praying today for the Davises, the Harbisons. We're praying for the Allens, the Caldwells. We're praying, my God, for every, every grieving family everywhere. Give the comfort, my God, that only you can provide in the name of Jesus, the Adams and the Austin family in Jesus' name. God, we're praying right now that you remember the body of Christ everywhere. Every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, every bishop and elder, every first lady, all the pastor's children. God, I'm praying today that you would look on, my God, the young people. Look on mothers and missionaries, ministers and deacons, every musician, singer and psalmist, the entire body of Christ in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Lord, touch and deliver now. Oh God, strengthen the church. Let the church have the urgency of the hour to witness, to share, and to do what only you have called us to do, God, that souls might be saved before it is too late. God, I'm praying today for first responders, essential workers, firemen, policemen, EMTs. I'm praying today that you would look on that you would look on everybody, everywhere, God, that works to help other people. God, in hospitals, nursing homes, rehab centers, hospice centers, clinics, banks, stores, construction sites, everywhere, God. Lord, we lift up oh God, health and healing now in the name of Jesus Christ. And as you're healing, God, look on this world from Turkey to Syria to the Ukraine, throughout the country, God, Lord, heal the land. Heal the land from sin. Heal the land from violence. Heal the land from jealousy, from hatred. Heal the land from injustice. Heal the land from sexism and racism. And let the church, my God, be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. God, I pray for the Grahams today, Lord. I pray for your grace to be upon the people. Keep us today. Cover us in your precious blood. And we give your name the glory, the honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Everybody on this line, let's give God the glory. Everybody on this line, let's give God the glory because we know that he is able. We know that he is able. We know that he is able. Hallelujah, 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 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. This is my declaration for today. Lord, let me keep the word in my mouth. Lord, let me keep the word in my mouth. I want to be a vessel that you can use as a witness, as a warning, as a beacon, as a trumpet. Lord, I just want to be that vessel that declares your word. And you don't have to be a preacher. Let me just say this to declare the word of God. If you've got the word in your mouth, you need to open your mouth and share the word with whoever will hear you. Whoever will hear you, whoever will listen and receive what God gives you, you need to share that word. Don't allow, don't allow anything to silence you because the word, the world rather needs the witness that we share. God bless you today. Thank you so much for being with us. I'm trusting that this biblical meditation and prayer has blessed you and that your day is off to a wonderful start. You can stay connected with Refuge Temple all day today. This prayer service is available on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and thank God for the conference call listeners who join us each day. You can also stay connected through our podcast, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and Spotify. All of it's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Our radio broadcast airs every day, Monday through Friday at 8.30 a.m. on GregoryGospel.com. Let me thank everybody who sees and sows and shares with this ministry. Your gifts help us to do the things that we need to do, and we thank you for your giving, and we thank you for sharing. And if you want to be a blessing, you can mail a gift to Refuge Temple Church. P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. That's Refuge Temple, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. You can give online. Our website is www.refugetemple, N is in North, C is in Carolina.com, Refuge Temple, NC.com. You can share on the donate page. If you have the GiveLify app, just search for Refuge Temple. You'll see the picture of the church um, in, in on GiveLify and make your gift there. If you have Cash App. Our Cash App is dollar sign the number one refuge. Dollar sign the number one refuge. And we thank you for your gifts. We are saddened to announce the transition and the passing of Bishop Delroy Thomas, um, who was the Bishop of Jamaica and the pastor of the Mother Church Refuge Temple of Kingston. Certainly a wonderful servant of the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself to the ministry, gave himself to the people of Jamaica, to the body of Christ, an innovator. Um, we were just with him. My wife and I were just with him um, just in January. And so we are deeply saddened, but we are hopeful in the power of the resurrection. We want you to pray for his family. Please pray for the church family. Please pray for all the saints in Jamaica that God would strengthen and keep them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, we're fasting and praying. Let's believe God and trust God for added and continued strength. The Lord keep the word in our mouths that we be faithful servants to this gospel. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. God bless each of you. Shalom, shalom. Pray for us.